I think a lot of us believe that Nico is a national superstar already. He played in one game. We've heard so much about him. The national media has heard a lot about him. But is he more of a regional story than a national story? After talking to some people in the media, and that's what we tend to do over the weekend, is just gab and gossip. I think he's more of a regional story. I think that a lot of people think Tennessee could have a pretty good quarterback and he's going to sort of make his debut, even though he played against Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. But let's wait and see what this guy's got. I don't think most people nationally think of Nico as this guy is going to be a star the way they would look at, I don't know, an Arch Manning. And there's a list that supports my theory from CBS Sports. We're not going to spend a lot of time going over lists because you could make a summer out of that. We're going to bring you more unique content. But we did want to address this. Why would Nico Ia Maleava not be on this list, Caleb Calhoun? So Andrew Ivins of CBS Sports had a list on 10 highly ranked college football recruits quickly meeting the hype. And it's based around, and to be fair, it's based around practice reports and things like that. I get that. So wide receivers for uh, Jeremiah Smith and Cam Coleman are on the list. Florida quarterback DJ Lagway is on the list. Clemson linebacker Sammy Brown, Alabama cornerback Xavier Brown, Nebraska quarterback Dylan Riola, North Carolina wide receiver Jordan Shipp, Miami tight end Elijah Lofton, Michigan State wide receiver Nick Marsh, and Texas quarterback Arch Manning are on this list. Okay, there are... About four dudes on that list you just noted off that I'm not familiar with, and I cover football for a living. So that's not a good sign to start with. No, this is this is completely forgetting about Nico Iamaliava because I get you go off practice report, reports in the spring, and Arch Manning lit it up in the spring, but you know if you're going to do a freshman like highly touted recruits already making an impact in game action should matter a lot particularly more than spring practice where Davis, you and i know coaches try to make certain freshmen look good in spring practice because they're trying to get them out there and no nico imaliava unlike arch manning actually has started a game and everybody who saw nico play that day was super impressed us included so i just find it absolutely insane that Nico Iamaliava would be left off this list. And I started to think, what, how could he not be that hyped up? He's already started a game. He's a five-star commitment. He's at the center of an NIL lawsuit that's going to take down the NCAA. I mean, with all of that, you would think he'd be a huge news story across the board. And I feel like he's just forgotten about Oftentimes at the expense of Arch Manning, and maybe the Manning name has something to do with that, but you would think that wouldn't keep Nico Imaliava totally off a list like this. And so now I'm starting to think maybe uh, are we insular, Dave? Is just covering Tennessee, being around the the being within that um network, making us think that Nico Imaliava is getting more national hype than he actually is. I, I think. Josh Heupel's partly to blame for this because of his limited practice access. I'm not knocking him. That's the way he does his business. That, to me, is like saying paint that wall blue or yellow. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. We're going to do our jobs no matter how he does his. So if that's what he thinks is best for the program, then do that. By the way, take a second and hit the smash and like button. However, you used to hear stories coming out of spring practice when the entire things were open that, oh, at freshman Casey Clawson, he could be excellent, has great zip on his pass. He made an incredible uh, slant route completion to blah, blah, Dante Stallworth, whoever the case. You don't get those stories out of spring camp. I'm not knocking the writer who did this. It makes me wonder how you even possibly base any sort of rating on these guys that have just shown up at Tennessee. And there are a lot of other schools that are run like Tennessee. I don't know how you come up with this list, but I'll answer your question. I think Nico is a little bit more regional than maybe we realize because we deal with it on a daily basis. That's so crazy to think about. I mean, a guy like Nico Iamaliava, 
is, I mean, there's so many reasons for him to be a highly touted quarterback that everybody's in love with. Everybody's in love with Hypel's offense. I get what you're saying about Hypel maybe keeping things close to the vest and not, not promoting things a lot, but he's just two years from, we're, we're less than two years removed from Hinton Hooker being a Heisman finalist until he got hurt. And so I see something like that. And I think you see that you see Miki Yamaliyama's hype, the fact that he took down the NCAA. And you think, why is he not on this list? The only other explanation I can give Dave is, um, and this is kind of funny to say, maybe national media doesn't understand Joe Milton's limitations. So they think Heupel's offense is a little more gimmicky than they realized because it struggled last year because they thought Joe Milton was just another Hendon hooker. So the thinking is this offense has been figured out. Yes. And I will tell you, I will actually give you a, a factoid on that. I, I've thrown him under the bus before because I've accused him of being in the tank for certain agencies that have NFL draft prospects. And that's why he props them up. And I'm talking about Mel Kuyper, where last year he said when he was analyzing Hendon Hooker's draft stock, he said the red flag on Hendon Hooker is that Joe Milton stepped in for Hendon Hooker and looked just as good when they played in the Orange Bowl. Now, you and I know that's not true. If you actually watch the flow of the game, even in that Orange Bowl, Joe Milton didn't look anything like what Hendon Hooker looked like during the season. Well, and I also know that people on the team were absolutely stunned he played as well as he did. I know yeah. that for a fact. That, that They felt like that was his very best game. So we asked the question on our uh, poll question on our YouTube page, why is Nico not getting more pub from the national media? They hate the balls. Just an oversight. Everyone wants to talk about Arch. It doesn't help that a Manning is in the SEC now when you have a superstar young quarterback. A lot of superstar young quarterbacks are probably going to be overshadowed by a guy named Arch Manning. Wouldn't you? think that would be the case caleb brought to you by don self at state farm customer service still matters for 40 years they have built their reputation on taking care of their customers when it's time to pay that claim out it gets done we all want great prices and that's part of what don self does customer service is what really stands out don self.net right below don self.net or 423-396-2126 423-396-2126 two six is i mean a lot of guys are going to get overlooked because of arch and the fact that he's at texas it's not like he's at mississippi state I mean, that's a pretty big easy story to hang a part of your column on if i can say it a nice way i think the manning name actually now works against a lot of people so i'm not going i mean i get it it's I don't mind Arch being on the list. I think it's more Nico being off the list because I, I I think the Manning name a lot of times works against people now. I mean, there's there's anonymous scouts saying Arch Manning's not an NFL draft pick. That's that's stupid. He's an NFL draft caliber pick. Okay, so they, and they won't go on record saying it. Um, but they're but people are saying that. I, I just know, and you know this. It, this started back with Peyton Manning at Tennessee in '94. There was a contingency, and I've I've actually read old articles about it, Dave. You've talked about how it was 60-40 Manning Stewart. The Stewart people, many of them genuinely thought Fulmer only went with Manning because of his name, not because he was the better quarterback. And which looking back is like, no, he went with them because he was the better quarterback. And no yeah, coach and, is gonna and, and the Manning name wasn't the Manning name then. I mean, it was yeah, just they had Ar one quarterback Archie. from it was yeah, exactly. And I remember I, I was old enough to this point. I, I was young, but I was old enough to remember when Eli committed to Ole Miss. And I lived in Memphis, remember, guys, and that's very much in the Ole Miss market. There was a lot of negative talk about Eli. There was a lot of talk that he was only there because of his name. And up until about it's a it wasn't until about halfway through the 2002 season where people started to get high on Eli as a quarterback. There was a lot of negative talk around him. Didn't help that he had that uh, public intoxication arrest in 99. And things like that, but you know, okay, fresh. When a, a lot of freshmen have that, no one says anything. When a freshman Manning does it, all of a sudden he's a spoiled brat. You know what I mean? That's what everybody was saying about him, which was totally unfair. So I think in many ways the Manning name works against you. So I don't, I, I, I understand. I actually think Arch ha having Manning by his last name hurts him 
So uh, I wouldn't go with that. Okay, how much does Nico get hurt by the fact that Josh Heupel is a let's keep everything quiet coach? I mean, some coaches have open practices fewer and fewer, but Josh Heupel wants to keep everything quiet. That's how he is. Should he open things up at all to create superstars, to create a, a potential Heisman run, or should he stay quiet? Caleb, I ask you that brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. They've got the fire opals, a Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. You think Josh Heupel just likes it like this, that he keeps everything on the DL? And if you really know how good Nico is going to be, then it's because he's probably told you or you've been paying close attention to other sources at Tennessee football practice, but you're not getting it via a soundbite that said, my gosh, this Nico guy's unbelievable. That's not Hypel's style. You're not getting it by saying, look at that Nico guy. He threw like eight incredibly perfect passes in a row. Let's write about that. You're just not getting any pub. Is this to be expected? I think it is to be expected. Our poll question is this, why is Nico not getting more pub from national media? They hate the balls, 25%, just an oversight, 12%. Everyone wants to talk about Arch, 62%. Caleb, what say you? Wow. Wow. Tennessee fans complaining about the Manning name being an impact. That's actually something I never thought I'd see, honestly. <laughs> um, so I think that, um, I don't think it's a Manning name. I, I, I think it's, I think it's either an oversight or I think there's some hatred for Tennessee. And I'm not, I can't believe I'm saying that because I usually don't call out, you know, I don't like to, I'm the most unbiased, like almost anti-Tennessee person among people who covers Tennessee. But I, it, I think the way Tennessee in the past, Tennessee fans have really embarrassed and humiliated journalists who haven't done their job in certain moments. Um, I think a lot of national media has resentment to Tennessee um i think it you know dating back to the greg shiano moment i think there was a genuine disdain for many people with tennessee over that because i just i'll just say what it is a lot of reporters thought they were going to get good access with greg shiano and tennessee fans cost them their chance to have good access mike has a really good point clickbait arch on the title of a story that's very true i work for a group who covers the entire SEC and now some other conference. And if Kirk Herbstreit said, uh, oh man, it's it's hot in here. Um, I need a glass of water. It was like, stop everything. And right, Kirk Herbstreit said, because he would get so many clicks just because of his name. The Manning thing still gets that. It still gets people to the top because you could be searching for the Manning cast and you could put Manning television. Who knows? Arch Manning's latest game with texas might come up so there is some seo factor in there as well right oh definitely definitely and it's you're right it's now worse with like online media than it ever used to be as far as by the way i i wanted to and, and by the way i don't one of my first articles whenever i first started writing college football i got hold of the picture of johnny manziel rolling up a 20 dollar bill in the bathroom in vegas and i just wrote johnny manziel and like i, I knew that article was going to take off and so I get how that works. But as far as, by the way, the coaches keeping him under wraps, I think Hypo like Hypo does like promoting his players, but he likes to do it just in the game, which is why he runs up the score a little more than he should. It's 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 actually the reverse of Philip Fulmer. Remember when Philip Fulmer would drive the media train and the media hype is behind certain players, but wouldn't try to beef up their stats in a game to do it? He just, you know, went to ESPN and said, I think Eric Ainge has many of the similar qualities as Peyton Manning. <laughs> 